now. There we go. So uh, welcome everybody. My name is Jason Pratt. I am the club manager for the Cascades Swim Club. Beside me is coach um, Jackie Pratt. She is our head coach for a development program. So she looks after um, essentially everybody that is 11 and under in the program and oversees that. We also have coach Marin and coach McKenzie on as well. They are our lead Olympic way um, and sorry, and junior Olympic way uh, coaches. So they are also here under the call. And so what this is really about is that uh, junior Olympic way is our first level of competitive swimming. And so Junior Olympic Way, it's a four-year program. And um, when the coaches feel we're ready, we get them entered into competitions and they run um, uh, get into a summit just like they just like every other member in the program. So what we're going to talk about here um, is just exactly that. How do we uh, get information about a summit? How do we enter a swim meet? How do we uh, ensure that we're at the right place at the right time? What is it we bring? What to expect? And what it is all about? Now, some of us um, uh, have been swimmers before, so we have a little bit of an understanding of how that works. Some of us are brand new to the sport of competitive swimming and have absolutely no idea what is going on. And so, um, you know, we'll try and cover off everything for everybody and then as we said before leave a little bit of time for questions after that um, once we get part way through so all of that to say things are a little bit different than they normally are particularly with what's going on with covid and some additional restrictions on um, addition additional restrictions and, and, and measures on how we can still operate so means and we'll talk a little bit about that as we as we kind of go through this so um, if it ain't, if you want to take any notes, um, you know, this presentation will be up and available. You can go back and you can review it. It will be on our YouTube channel in the next probably 24 hours once it's done. Um, uh, and we're able to download it from, from zoom, but feel free to take any notes and then by all means, ask questions, uh, put them in the chat. If something comes up through this meeting or, uh, towards the end, we'll just have an opportunity to, as I said, once again, uh, ask those questions and get your answers. Okay. So, um, here we are, um, agenda for tonight. Uh, we're just going to talk about swim meets, as we mentioned at the beginning, how to sign up, um, I mean, sign up sheet, meet information sheet, things like selecting events, um, what to bring, uh, what to expect, such as DQs uh, during a competition. And then we're going to talk specifically about the age group challenge, which is the meet that we are going to be putting our junior Olympic way swimmers in. And that's in the middle of December, 17th through 19th. And we'll talk a little bit about that um, specifically because just a few different things that are happening um, as they relate to that meet. So how to sign up for a swim meet. <clears throat> This is what um, is, is a standard meet information sheet. Ordinarily, and you have not yet received this because we wanted to have this discussion oh, with, have. oh, you have received it. I believe they have. <laughs> okay, my apologies. Uh, you may have received this already. And if you haven't, uh, um, you will. And uh, this is what the uh, information looks like. Um, as a, as, a, as a club member when we have a competition coming up. Typically, you would get this a month in advance of the event. And so for everybody here, this is the age group challenge. And the particulars around it are all on this document. And those will be the name of the event, the date of the event, the location of the event, and then the particulars, such as uh, what are the warm-up times, what are the racing times, on each day. Um, they are pretty consistent through throughout this one, just a little bit different on, on Sunday, although I don't think that's relevant for you guys at this time. But so everybody is aware, this is what it looks like. You'll get this email to you. If you misplace it or you misplace the email, it's no problem. It is always on our website and I'll show you how you can go and you can look at that not long, long after. 
So this would be, as a family member, um, the first piece of information you get um, indicating your swimmer um, has been selected to attend an event. What Another key thing that's in here, and it's not uh, relevant at this moment for um, this particular group, just because of the way we've, um, and, and when we're holding this meeting is the deadline. You'll see here, and it's in red near the bottom, the cancellation deadline. And what this is, is your deadline as a family member to say yes or to say no um, for your swimmer entering the meet. We have a lot of flexibility when we are hosting the event. This is a Cascade Swim Club hosted event. We have little to no flexibility though when it is not an event that we are hosting. So that's not terribly important for right now but it is just something to be mindful of in the, in the go forward. And as you know, you sort of progress through the club and at different levels that those deadlines are, um, uh, are fairly important. So like I said, that to be said, um, the deadline of the third is, is not applicable to you guys. Um, we're going to give you a few extra days to get that, um, to get that done. So meet information sheet. That's what it looks like. Now there's just a couple of pictures in here and there's screenshots and we're going to walk through this, um, but we wanted to show you what all of the um, uh, important pieces of the Cascade website are. First and foremost, when it comes to a submit, you'll get, just as I said, that meet information sheet sent directly to you in the body of an email. Um, there'll also be a link inside that email, which will take you to the Cascade website and then you'll just be able to follow the steps to log in. If you decide, hey, I, I got the email, but I'm, I'm gonna look at this later, it's no problem. You can always go to the site in advance of the deadline and sign in. First and foremost, when it comes to submits, this information is only visible to club members when they're logged in. So you'll notice on that top image, you'll see a little bit of our logo and, and name. And in the top right corner, unless it's mirror, you'll see the, the sign in. So you have to go and sign into that uh, to the website. At the front of the page, you'll see a list of swim meets. And then you just look for the particular event that you are uh, going to sign up for. Currently, you see four swim meets listed if you went to the website, website now. Ontario Junior International, Blizzard Battle, JP Facet, and the Age Group Challenge. So you would just find the competition that you're looking to register for. And then you'll see in the bottom right-hand corner, um, there's also a, a, this is just a blow up of the Summit, the H-Group Challenge. And there's a button circled in red that says edit commitment. And that's the button that you would press um, to get into the event. And then to let us know that yes, um, Susan is going to swim or no, she is not. So once you press that button at a commitment, then you're, you're uh, um, going to go to this, this particular link, which you'll see uh, in the top, it says athlete sign up, it says in the name of the meet, age group challenge 2021. It says North Pool. That's not really relevant for you guys. You don't need to worry about that. But there is a particular reason why it says that, but that's not something you need to worry about at the moment. And then as you go down, you'll see the information about the summit. Uh, and then again, where it says, click on member name to declare for this event. For you, you will see your swimmer's name. When you click on that name, circled in red, um, then you'll take, uh, it will take you to the inside of the event. And you'll see on the next image beside there, it says member athlete. In this case, it says Cole Pratt and it says declaration. And you would just click yes, or you would click no. Yes, please sign up Cole or no, uh, Cole will not be able to attend this event. Once you've done that, you've said yes, or you've said no, you'll see a list of events that pop up. Um, this is not, uh, relevant for you at this point with the club, you never have to push uh, or click 
or choose any of these events. That is the coach's rule at this level, and they will choose all of the events for the swimmers. And typically at your level, your coaches are choosing all of the same events for the swimmers. So again, it's not that particular piece choosing events you don't have to worry about, but you do have to click the next uh, big red circle there where it says save changes, because when you say yes, uh, or you say no, um, the event list will pop up, but you do have to click save changes at that point, whether it is a yes or is a no. Okay, and then that's important because um, if you don't, then you'll, you'll be what we call undeclared, which means you've not said yes or no, and then we're, we're not entirely sure what your plans yeah. are for that. If weekend. you don't press save, you won't show up um, as a listed swimmer, and then we will assume you don't want to attend so that that save button is pretty important and we, we've run into it already this fall with um, parents missing that part so yep. yeah yeah so just remember save at the end how about this jake yeah so uh, um there is a um, and i'm just going to go back a page So just, I just went back to um, the declaration. So after you've gone through, you've logged into the website, you've chosen your swimmer, you're going to say yes, or you're going to say no. If you look just below the asterisk declaration, and here it says yes, and then right below that, it says notes. So this notes section is a chance for you to tell the club, to tell your coach, oh, look, we're at a soccer game until 11 a.m. So we would still like to come to the swim meet. I know the meet goes till 1.30. Um, can you just choose events appropriately so that we can still come and raise something, but we're, we're not gonna be there until 11.30 in the morning. It doesn't have to be as long-winded as that, but you get the idea. Um, or in the case of a competition, I think in May, there's one that is um, run on two separate days. It could be we can be there Saturday, but we're going out of town on Sunday or vice versa, something like that, um, because those things are 100% are, are, are possible. And we don't want you to feel like if you can't go for the entire thing or what is laid out, that it doesn't mean you can't go for a portion of it. So that would be what the notes are for. OK, that would be what the notes are for. Let me go through this part. I uh, in a uh, yes. second, I'll need you right there. Okay, so I'm just gonna share a separate screen for you here. And we're just gonna walk through this piece um, uh, step by step. So, So this is the, hopefully everybody's seeing the Cascade website here. So these are, if you're looking at the website and you're not logged in, you'll see you don't see anything under swimmates and that information. That's just because it's not visible to non-members. So if you, again, are not following the link um, that comes in your email, but just want to see the main information, you would just sign in. Here. <clears throat> and my account just shows it slightly differently, but yours would um, still show you here. And so it, you'll see now that I'm signed into the web page, I see all this information around Simmates. So I want to sign up Cole for the age group challenge. So I click on edit commitment, just as we discussed earlier. I go, I see my swimmer's names listed here under my account. I click on Cole's name. I say that, yes, he's going to swim. I can say he can't be there Friday, as an example. I'm not going to choose any events because coach is going to make that determination, but you'll see them all listed here. 
And all you do at the end is you go down to this bottom right hand corner, click Save Changes, and there you go. You can see down here when it goes back to the event, you'll see that we are committed to attend the event. Okay. And then once you're done that, you can log out or you can continue to be on the site. So there we go. Just give me a second here. I'm just going back to the presentation. And there we go. So I think, can everybody see that summit again? So I think everybody can see the swim meets again. I'm just going to check here. Oh, sorry, we just had a question um, regarding the swim meet, and I can address that right now the age group challenge. Um, are there other clubs participating in this event? Yes, there are. Um, and so I will explain exactly how that is working. Um, While we do this part first. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna, um, but uh, yes, there are other clubs. It is not just Cascade that is at that event, but we will talk about expectations and um, for both you as um, parents and, and also your swimmers would have of the summit. And with that, I think that we can, um, move on to uh, Coach Jackie, if you'd like to talk about some meets, yeah. Um, okay, so hi everyone. Thanks for, for joining the meeting. Uh, just to go forward, as Jason mentioned, the coaches select the events for the swimmers and, and we do that actually for, um, you know, until they get in their later teenage years because, um, Often, you know, I mean, we know what they're ready for and, and uh, we have a, a good idea of what, you know, we, it's important that the swimmers are successful when they are at a meet. And for this meet, all the Junior Olympic Way swimmers will be entered in two events. And those are 50 free, 50 freestyle and 50 backstroke. So those are the two events they've been swimming. And Coach Marin and Coach McKenzie, um, are working towards getting them prepared for that, um, including starts, turns, and, and that sort of thing. Um, so they're feeling confident and ready um, to go. Now, those two events are on the Saturday of the meet, and Junior Olympic Way is only racing on the Saturday. The meet is a three-day meet, um, but we're just going to give them a little... Um, you know, introduce them slowly. So we don't want to overwhelm them and they don't need to race in a three-day meet on their first go. But um, this is a really good, fun meet, lots of young kids and it's our meet. So um, it seemed appropriate uh, to put them in this one. And because the 50 free and 50 back are both on the same day, um, uh, it works out perfectly. So uh, yeah, so just, just so you're aware, we're only swimming on the Saturday and um, I will be doing the entries for them. So you don't have to worry about that as Jason mentioned. And I, I was also just gonna mention that the meet is at Repsol Center. So some of the kids may have never swam there before, but um, we always, you know, they are, as they get going with their swimming, they're, they're going to race at different pools. And, and I always think that it's, it's great exposure to them to be able to, manage themselves in a different swimming pool, different environment. Um, you know, sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming, but we do find that in the long run, you know, it just helps their swimming readiness and, 
every time they come to a meet, you know, that sort of thing doesn't phase them. So this meet is at Repsol. Um, you know, going forward, they will have meets at Seton as well, which is convenient for everyone. We can't have meets at Canyon Meadows because uh, we can't dive into the, the main tank, of course. Um, do you want me to continue with this yep. and then come back yep. to that? Yep. Okay. Let's do that. So I was just going to quickly just talk about, um, you know, as Jason mentioned, some of you have, um, some of our JOW swimmers have older siblings. And so for some of your parents, this is a little bit boring, but, um, and then of course, some of you were swimmers, so you understand it all, but it can be a little bit, you know, your first swim meet can be a little bit overwhelming. And we, and we just want to make sure, um, you know, the coaches, are well aware of how the kids will be feeling. Some will be um, some will be anxious and stressed, and some will not. Some will show up and be ready to go. And um, I think you know one thing I wanted to mention. If you, anytime I ask swimmers what their favorite part about swimming is, it's always number one is their friends, and number two is the swim meets. And so, you know, when they first get going, it can be a little bit stressful for them. Um, but I can assure you, you know, as they get rolling and they, they understand the flow of a swim meet, you know, finding their event, their heat, their lane, the coaches will be there to guide them. Um, you know, once they've done a couple of races, they will, uh, they're really going to have a good time. And our emphasis with, you know, coach McKenzie and coach Marin and myself and all the coaching staff, we will have extra help at the meet for them. And we will just be, you know, our focus, our focus is just for the kids to have fun and, you know, try a couple of races and, you know, spend some time with their buddies and, and get to know each other. And um, it's a lot of fun. Um, so typically at a swim meet, there's a lot of volunteers and at the junior Olympic way level, you are not required to volunteer the swim meet. The next level up, however, is when it kind of begins at the Olympic way level you will be required to do volunteer hours at swim meets. And um, so it's a little bit, you know, we're kind of an unusual sport that way where you're kind of right on the pool deck with your swimmer. And, um, you know, we just really, sometimes when parents bring their swimmers to the first swim meet, they have a, a little bit of difficulty um, separating from their swimmer. And uh, so we would just kindly ask that you just let the coaches take the kids. And, you know, if somebody is uh, a little bit worried or anxious, the coaches are well rehearsed and that sort of thing. And we, you know, we're usually pretty good at managing those situations and calming them down and getting them ready for the race. So I would encourage all the chatter at home to be very positive and just encourage them to have fun and, and, uh, you know, it really is, it, it's such a, a, a great fun time being at swim meets. Um, let's see, okay, just what quickly what to pack in their bag. And I will certainly follow up with emails, listing some of these details so that you're, you're on top of things. I know it's a lot of information all at once, but when they come to a swim meet, they need cap, goggles, all the junior Olympic way swimmers who attend the meet will receive a Cascade t-shirt. So they will have a t-shirt to wear at the swim meet. And um, also typically the pool deck is, is cold. <laughs> and so we always encourage the swimmers to have warm clothing on underneath their t-shirt and um, you know long pants to keep their, their bodies warm. Some of them shiver quite badly in between races. So, you know, and again, it's just one of those things that they sort of learn as they go to uh, put their clothes back on in between races to stay warm. Um, so in their, in their bag, you would pack cap goggles, warm clothing that can get wet an extra towel, um, an extra pair of goggles probably is a good idea. And uh, of course a water bottle and a snack. And so, um, I will follow up again with an email on what types of snacks are best, but, um, ideally the, the less garbage to clean up afterwards is ideal. And, um, you know, nothing that's going to crumble on the pool deck. The lifeguards don't like us when that happens. So we try and just keep it simple, something that will give them some energy and some pickup and keep them, get them through their events. Um, let me just see here. 
Okay, and then also, you, you know, just um, try and encourage your swimmers. If they have a question or a concern, um, to ask their coach and, um, you know, it, it's really important that they learn to be a little bit independent when they, when they come to these meets, um, it can be overwhelming, but I think that, um, the sooner we get them on track with being brave and just asking their coach, if they have a question or, you know, if their goggles break, what do they do? You know, um, we, we want them to be good problem solvers. And so we always encourage them to reach out to us first, um, and we really don't want, um, you know, mom and dad rushing down to the pool deck to come in and sort of repair those sorts of things. So as best you can, um, before the meet, you know, tell them to, to have fun and reach out to the coach if something comes up, if they have a question or something they're not sure of. And of course, our coaches will be preparing them with the same information so that we're all on the same page. That'd be great. And now I think... Yeah. So go back, yeah. So uh, just going to go back on, pull it back a step here on this competition. So <clears throat> a question was asked earlier: um, uh, Will there be swimmers from other clubs there? And the answer is yes. And so just because we are still um, in the midst of this COVID um, situation that the rest of the world is in everywhere. Um, there are a few different rules that apply to running a swim meet. In particular, there are rules that apply to the 11 and under swimmers who have just become eligible to be vaccinated. And the way that those rules are working, notwithstanding that there are different rules for adults and those actually 12 and older who come into the building, the Repsol Sports Center, just like at Seton, um, you need to be vaccinated or show a COVID negative test and carry your QR code and so on. So that all still applies to mom and dad when you come to the pool. But for us to be able to have a summit with 11 and under swimmers, all of the 11 and under swimmers in attendance have to get a negative COVID test um, before they can swim in the competition. So what we as a club have arranged is for our COVID rapid test for all of our um, 11 and under swimmers who are doing the competition. The Canadian Sport Institute uh, Calgary will be coming to the pool on Thursday, the 16th of December. We will send, Repsol. or sorry, uh, the pool. To Repsol. Repsol pool. Yeah. Repsol pool on Thursday, the 16th of December to do COVID testing for all of our athletes. And normally they're all, uh, those 11 and unders with a few exceptions are all at, um, uh, well, they're at various facilities, but um, we're coming to a central location to do the testing, and it will be the Repsol Sports Center on Thursday afternoon slash evening, the 16th of December. So instead of being able to practice on that day, um, that will be what we're doing because, again, all of the swimmers need to have this negative COVID test before they can come to the meet. Um, so in, uh, in exchange for missing the Thursday practice and... Um, sorry, I'm just going to backtrack a little bit. The, the week leading up to the swim meet, so we're looking at Monday the 13th through to Wednesday the 15th, because um, the 16th, Dece Thursday, December 16th, practice will be canceled for all JOWs, because we understand you're going to have to go get your COVID test. So on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday leading up to the meet, um, we're going to have three practices that week. So everyone um, is going to come together and we're all going to train at Seton YMCA that week. And this will come to you in an email with specific details. So um, in case you're confused right now, <laughs> but um, Monday, the 13th, we will train at Seton 4.30 to 5.30. Tuesday, the 14th, we will train at Seton from 5.30 to 6.30. And Wednesday, again, uh, the 15th, 4 30 to 5 30 and so we are going to use this opportunity to bring all the jow swimmers together so mckenzie swimmers from candy meadows and the seaton swimmers who are already at seaton 
um, and we can just um, get on the starting blocks. And, you know, unfortunately, Candy Meadow, the Candy Meadow swimmers aren't able to actually dive and swim a full length. So they have to kind of do it in separate pieces. So this will be nice for them to get on the blocks and, um, you know, just help prepare the kids for the meet. So we're really hoping that um, the slight change in schedule that week is doable for everyone. And everyone is welcome to come to all three practices, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then of course, Thursday, um, you know, we're hoping everyone can get down to Repsol and get tested. And then they'll be off Friday and then they'll come to the swim meet on Saturday. So that, that will be the schedule that week. And um, I think it's gonna be a great opportunity to um, get them all together and get them excited for the swim meet. So we hope Hopefully yeah. it works out. Yeah. And so just so you know, there's no charge for the testing. The club is paying the cost um, to, to bring uh, the Canadian Sport Institute Calgary to the facility and to run the testing. So there's no additional charges for, um, uh, for, for anyone in that. Um, and again, there won't be any training, regular training on Thursday the 16th. It will be uh, in exchange for that, as Coach Jackie said, running three practices, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, the 13th, 14th, and 15th, prior to the summit and prior to the JOW racing, which will be on Saturday. And so the details, because the question was asked, what time is it? The details of that are in that meet information sheet. Um, quickly, it's a 7.30 warm-up for an 8.30 start on Saturday the um, 18th of December, but you can see that in the media information sheet or go back to it um, later when you see this presentation. And um, in case you're wondering, the, the age group challenge swim meet does have finals, uh, prelims and finals. Most of the meets that they will be at um, at this level are not going to have finals. And so essentially, um, I, I don't suspect it's something that our junior Olympic way swimmers are going to going to have to worry about, but you never know if someone swims uh, really fast in the morning, um, we will communicate with you. And if they want to return for a final, then that's that's um, certainly an option. But um, yeah, just so you know that um, if anyone has any questions about finals, um, just reach out to me in an email or, or you can ask a question here in the chat, of course. Yeah. But And so what yeah. Coach Jackie was mentioning, there is a heats or preliminaries, typically morning session, and then there is an evening finals session. Preliminaries and heats are sort of two interchangeable terms for the, for the uh, uh, meaning the same thing where in the case of our boys, the age category at this competition is 11 and under. For the girls, it is 10 and under. So as an example, you would take the girls, 10 and under 50 meter freestyle. There may be 40 swimmers entered in that event. All of them, all 40 would swim the preliminaries or the heats in the morning. And then the top eight, and at some events, it's the top 16, will swim in the finals at night. So our expectation, because this is the first swim meet for the vast majority, if not all of these swimmers, is that they will swim the preliminaries and they, that will be probably the extent of it. If they qualify for the finals, as Jackie mentioned, they're more than welcome. I mean, we'd encourage them to come back and swim again, but um, it, the likelihood of that is actually fairly, fairly slim. So, okay. Um, there's questions there. Yeah, so I'm just going to take a look. We have a few questions and see what they are. Oh, swim, sorry. Okay, Saturday we talked about uh, time duration for swim meets on Saturday. So um, we won't actually know that. The entry deadline for the swim meet is um, this Friday. So that's the deadline for all other clubs to get their entries into us. And then we would make a determination on, you know, a, or we would have a, an understanding of how long the preliminary session is going to be. Typically, uh, for a meet like this, the session is three or four hours long. Um, it won't be any longer than that, and it could be shorter. And we would let all of the junior Olympic way swimmers know specifically what time 
uh, they are swimming because we purposely put the 50 freestyle and the 50 backstroke on Saturday together within close proximity of each other so that they would all come in, swim it fairly early on, and then you know not be there for the duration of the event. But those particular details you would get um, next week. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so the question is, can we do the test at Shoppers uh, as an example? You're, you're more than welcome to do the test at Shoppers if that's what you would like to do. Um, and then you would just need to send in uh, the negative uh, COVID test result to our, our COVID officer. So we are making the arrangement um, for convenience sake to, to bring this group in and all get it done at the same time. But if for whatever reason you can't um, get into the uh, rep, uh, down to the Repsol, you're more than welcome to go to um, um, the, a pharmacy and get it done. You couldn't do it with one of the home kits. It would have to be at a licensed pharmacy um, that would give you that um, proof of negative test. Uh, kids had COVID, do they have to get tested? Um, it is, yes, and there's some specific uh, uh, we had actually had this discussion um, with uh, Swim Alberta or a discussion very similar to it. Um, and it depends on when exactly um, they had COVID. So within what proximity of the actual event um, that they had COVID, would they need to go get tested again? So you could email um, uh, the office directly with that question. And we could go over some of the details, um, for, with you on that and just let you know if it applies to you or not. A swim school yeah. actually, um, for Allison's question, swim school wraps up on the 11th so that swim school's not swimming that week. Um, right. the 13th to the, to the 16th. Yep. Okay. Good. Anything else? Well, let's just here. Um, so we talked about that with the age group challenge. Uh, let's go back. Okay. Right. So um, there will be spectators allowed because yeah. we didn't mention that. Yeah. So the, the age group challenge is um, um, it typically, and we just don't know exactly what's going to end up. The subscription and the entry is going to look like this year, but typically it's a large event, um, and people from across the province all all come and um, swim at this competition because it has a um, not that it's terribly important for you to know, but it has a dequalifying standard. So swimmers at a certain level and above are not allowed to enter this meet. This meet is more designed for. Uh, entry level novice swimmers, in our case, we're talking about JOW, novice competitive level swimmers, all the way up to swimmers who might compete at the provincial level, but no one um, who uh, competes at a higher level is, a, is a, able to enter the same events that your swimmers would be at. So um, there will be spectators there, lots of moms, dads, grandparents, and, and that um, uh, in the building. The same rules that apply for entry into most facilities like that and the Repsol Sports Center is participating in the restriction exemption program all apply here to spectators which means when you come in you'll have to show proof of vaccination with a QR code or a negative COVID test if um, if that's the case you'll have to be masked in the building uh, in the spectator zone and your swimmers will have to be masked as well. And those details will come from coach Jackie and, and the, and the office, um, yeah, uh, later, later on, but, um, uh, you, just so you're aware of the swimmers, just like when they go to practice, they'll have to keep their masks on, uh, unless they're in the pool and, you know, just a reminder. And I know coach Jackie has mentioned it uh, a number of times to your swimmers and, and emails directly to the families, they should have a little case to put the mask in because they'll need to wear it as they yeah. get to the block, they'll have to put it in a um, in their container, container. beside the block yeah. and then they put it on after they dry off and get out of the pool and and um, and and then go back and see their coach, so. Yeah, the mask container is gonna be important. There's a good question here from Yvonne. Um, and uh, 
we we tip, we typically send out a, a swim meet schedule every September, and typically by this time of the year, we've already participated in one, possibly two two swim meets. But um, just with COVID, we are we are sort of flowing <laughs> week to week here, and um, so we appreciate everyone's patience. And I don't um, I don't have an exact um, idea of when the next meet will be. We're always looking, you know, we, we will certainly be looking to slot them in and, and get that organized. Um, but the reality is, um, you know, the clubs have just sort of had to piece the, the swim meets together as, as, you know, in September, we didn't even know if we were going to be able to race. So, um, you know, we're glad we're getting this one in, but we will do our best to keep you, give you as much notice about swim meets as possible. And uh, we're looking ho at hopefully doing one in uh, February, March, or March. Probably, or, yeah. Most likely would be the next one. And they're, they're typically they're coming at this level every two to more often every three months, I think is. Yeah, typically uh, JOW does three to four meets in the season. But like I said, we're a little bit behind. Um, so during the prelims, are parents allowed to meet their kids off the pool deck? Yeah. And so, no, um, for not. yeah, like it, just as we sort of mentioned earlier, um, you know, their parents, you can certainly help your kid, uh, down through the change room and hand them off to the coach at the pool deck. We will make arrangements for that and give you some details. They'll coach this, the coaches will meet them outside the locker room and take them over to the team area. But after that, um, the only people allowed on the field of play are the coaches and the officials. So parents are not able to be on the pool deck when the competition is going on. Once they're done swimming, if you want to give them away from the stands and meet them in the change room, I think Repsol will let you go down and meet them. Um, but again, we, we always like to encourage the kids to, um, to you know, navigate this uh, on their own or with their coaches. And um, but certainly after they're done swimming, you can you can grab them and go. Um, I did want to mention one other thing, and I have um, spoken to a few parents so far, but um, we have um, we have some swimmers that we are looking to move up to Olympic way, which is the next level. Um, we're hoping for beginning of January, which makes the most sense. And I just wanted to mention this now, and uh, this will sort of become a, a separate meeting on its own, but I would like to just uh, just kind of give you a heads up. We are looking at um, probably, I think we've got about eight to 10 swimmers who we have identified, the coaches and myself together, um, looking like they're ready for the next level. And, you know, we're in this situation where COVID is kind of, um, put us a step back, but uh, of course, kids, kids are resilient, resilient, and they are um, just showing us that, you know, all, all the great things they can do in practice. And we're quite impressed with, with a number of them. And um, I mean, they're all doing well, but we, we have identified a few that um, we would like uh, to move up in January, starting in Olympic way. And uh, we will, I will soon reach out to you um, if your swimmer is one of those swimmers and, um, and then we'll have to have another meeting, <laughs> but, uh, once they get to Olympic way, that's when the parent, um, volunteer commitment, um, shows up. And, uh, like I said, that it's, uh, not something we want to get into tonight, but I just wanted to give you a heads up that that might be coming down the pipes for some of you and, um, which is very exciting on our end. So, um, and I just do quickly so. on that, like the, uh, um, I think it's a good opportunity for if you're able to uh, attend and watch on Saturday morning when your swimmers are there, just to take a look at what is going on um, on the pool deck, as an example of, uh, you know, and sort of what other parents are doing um, to, to, and, the, and sort of the requirement on the parents part to to run an event like this. And as Jackie had mentioned earlier, it's uh, a little bit more 
uh, commitment than is required uh, to, let's say, um, you know, host a league hockey game uh, in terms of the volunteer well, I, officials. So I'm on the call. It doesn't matter. It's not important. I'm about to whip our kids. Oh, so I'm you're, sorry. Uh, you might want to mute mm -hmm. just before. There we go. Um, the uh, you'll you'll see everything that is going on on the on the pool deck and sort of uh, the requirement for uh, volunteering and officiating and and um, you know it 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 may look like it is um, is quite a bit but it's really um, a million little pieces all broken up into very small parts and the ask for the next level Olympic way when you become part of that whether that's this year or next or the year after is is fairly minimal. Um, for brand new competitive parents in the Olympic Way program, but you'll be able to see a little bit of what is going on uh, from the stands when you're when you're watching. And so just take that opportunity. If you have any questions while you're there, um, just shoot us a note, and we'll be happy to uh, explain any sort of further detail. Um, I guess it would be after the fact, but um, you know that it's a good opportunity for parents to see sort of what lies ahead for both your swimmer. <laughs> and for, for you as a family, as a part of the organization, so. Um, I just see the question about uh, winter registration. So uh, when you registered for JOW in September, you are already registered right through till, till June. So you do not need to register again. The only, only uh, people that would have to do something different is uh, those moving into Olympic Way in January. Um, but just to answer that question. And then yeah. the other one. Are all JOW yes. meets conducted in Calgary? And the answer is yes. Yeah. Yeah. For all, all JOW meets are in Calgary. And they're typically, um, uh, you know, one of three pools, Seton, Repsol, or the Killarney um, pool, which is the other one that uh, we, we, just, we just sort of end up at, but the, yeah. one of those three pools, and more often than not, JOW is swimming at meets that we are hosting. And so mm -hmm. um, normally we, they might go to one in October, and they certainly do this December one. And then whether or not we do one in February, um, but for sure there would be one in, in March that they would go to. And then they would go to um, another one in likely May, but if not May, then in, at the beginning of June. But again, all of those meets would be in Calgary, yes. Okay. Great. Um, I had this on my notes and um, I just wanted to mention it. Beginning in January, all the junior Olympic way swimmers um, were going to ask that they have a, a training snorkel. And um, the swimmer snorkels are a, a great training tool um, to help kids with various, various uh, technical <laughs> things when they're training. And uh, we wanted to give it a go with junior Olympic way and get them started using the snorkel. Um, and I, I will follow up with an email on that as well. And um, I just remembered one thing we forgot to touch on, and that was um, the disqualifications, and mm. we missed that piece. But um, so just really quickly, um, swimming is very technical, and there's a lot of um, rules on when you're racing, on the way you turn, the way you touch the wall. I mean, at this point, they're only doing freestyle and backstroke, but there are specific rules on, you know, for instance, on a backstroke turn, you know, when they roll over onto their bellies, how they touch the wall and this sort of thing. And please don't be alarmed if your swimmer gets disqualified, um, especially in this beginning stages. Um, it, it will show up in the results and you'll see DQ and, and they won't have a time. And um, the emphasis at this point in their swimming uh, life is not about time you know it's about just uh, learning the ropes of the swim meet and and having fun and and just getting to know how things operate but 
Uh, the rules apply to whether you're five years old or 25 years old. So it, 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 they're all the same. And so the kids learn at a, a young age um, what those rules are. One thing, for example, um, free, freestyle, when you're swimming freestyle, there's very few things that you can get disqualified for in freestyle. However, we do find at this level when they're first starting their flip turn, um, they, uh, they often will miss the wall when they turn over and that will be a disqualification. So if you, if you do see that your swimmer was disqualified in freestyle, I can guarantee that's probably what it was. I can't think of many other things that, but that's just an example of what can happen. And it's okay if they get disqualified, it's a, it's a learning uh, situation. And then, you know, we hope they don't do it the next time. And it's just, um, that's kind of how we plunk along, but there's a lot to learn in swimming. There's a lot of um, technical rules. And uh, like I said, they just have to, it's just, we just don't want anyone to, to be alarmed if you see that your swimmer has been disqualified. Yeah. So a question about team sense. gear. And yes, we'd like to have uh, the swimmers in their cascade caps and the cascade suits. There were a few uh, supply chain issues as we're all aware of in terms of us being able to get proper size suits for our young swimmers, but we're fully stocked in the office now. So the club office uh, is where you would get those team suits. And so just here, um, you'll see some of the details about the cascade club office. It is down in the Repsol Sports Center. And, um, you know, the Repsol Sports Center, if you haven't been there, it is just south of downtown. Um, and it's just as McLeod Trail um, uh, splits on the south of the Elbow River. You can see it's situated on Lindsay Park. Um, and the address is, is there as well, 2225 McLeod Trail. So we do have hours, um, in the afternoons on Tuesdays and in the mornings on Thursdays. And what I would suggest that you do is if you know you're coming in, you know of a particular size that you need, is just email ahead, office at cascadeswimming.com, and we'll make sure that we've got exactly what you're looking for and the right um, sizes uh, of cements and so on. So, um, But as I mentioned, they will get a t-shirt. So yep. they'll at least have the t-shirt at the for Yeah. And um, to answer your question, yes. I mean, that this is something that is ongoing every day at practice. Um, you, you know, you've probably heard the co coaches shout out, if you're swimming backstroke, you have to finish on your back. Quite often kids will forget and they roll onto their belly to finish. So as an example. Um, yeah, so the question is, are the kids married sorry. aware of the rules? And <laughs> they are. Um, and, and so, but that being said, uh, very few swimmers go throughout their entire swimming career without getting, uh, disqualified at least once or yeah. half dozen times or more. So it's not really a big deal and you, you shouldn't really look at it as a negative reflection of where your swimmer is at, at this given point in time. It's not terribly important as coach Jackie had mentioned. Um, but it does happen. And as she did say, the, the stroke, the technical rules for a five-year-old, the same technical rules that apply for a 25-year-old. And so because of that, uh, and just the nature of six, seven, eight-year-old um, kids is that they're going to forget and they're going to do things wrong and they will get disqualified. And it's not really a big deal. It's mm -hmm. not a big deal. And, 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 and it shouldn't be something that you um, worry too much about. They are starting out with the two simplest of events. So um, they should, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure they're going to be successful. <laughs> yeah. So any other questions? We went over quite a bit of information. Um, and the majority of it was how do I sign up or say yes or say no first for me. But, um, you know, now's time. If you have any questions about that, um, by all means, put them in the chat. And, um, you know, you, this, this presentation will be up shortly if the, if the video is ready um, we'll put it up tomorrow and you can go back if you have any other questions um, review any of this or certainly send um, the office or coach jackie an email and um, we've been more than happy to answer those questions for you and the office will be sending out an email reminder for all of our jow families that we would like you to go in and sign up um, for the summit 
And so the deadline for everybody else is this Friday. Um, the deadline for JOW will be after the weekend. We'd like this done by Monday. So, um, so that your coaches can do all of the events. So Monday, the uh, 6th of December will be the deadline for sign up for JOW families for the age group challenge. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, good question. And this, uh, the question is when a child turns nine, do they move to Olympic Way or go to the technical improvement? Stroke improvement. Stroke improvement or a swim fit. So um, <laughs> it's a good question. So we have nine year olds in um, Junior Olympic Way right now. And uh, certainly that's, you know, some of those nine-year-olds, we would like to move up to Olympic Way in January, not all of them. Um, and if they're not ready for Olympic Way, uh, we will keep them in Junior Olympic Way for the remainder of the year. Um, and that's just fine. We'll leave them where they are. Uh, swim fit is um, going forward, going to be 10, 11, and a 12. Um, ideally, Ideally, we would like, you know, um, Junior Olympic Way to be six to nine and um, yeah, six to nine and swim fit 10, 11, 12. COVID has kind of put a, a curveball into those those age categories. So we've we've been a little bit, um, you know, it, it is what it is. And the kids are, are at where they're at and it's perfectly fine. It's just... Uh, yeah, so if your swimmer is turning nine this year, it's fine. They will stay in Junior Olympic Way and uh, we'll see what, you know, what they look like in June and, and, uh, and put them in, in, the, uh, in a different spot in, in January. I think swim fit is um, typically, uh, we, if we get not, you know, a 10 year old coming into the club who hasn't had any sort of, um, you know, previous experience with us. So they, um, that's sort of the direction of swim fit. It's a little bit different than. JOW you know. swimmers would graduate to Olympic way or one of the JAG yeah. programs. They, they normally wouldn't go to uh, swim fit. So. so once you're in the junior Olympic way stream, you're, you're in the competitive stream. And so that's where we like to keep the kids moving. Hopefully that helps. <laughs> answer your question yeah so i just out of respect for everyone's time it's we've just gone past the hour so um you know if there's any other questions um by all means uh you know it, just send an email to the office office of cascade swimming.com or coach.jackie.cascade at gmail.com and uh we'd be more than happy to answer them uh leading into the swimming we really hope and our uh, our, our greatest hope is that you'll all um, sign up and, and come to the summit and make this your first uh, competitive experience, the age group challenge. It's, it's really going to be the biggest event that we've put together in two years now, as we all kind of um, sort of see the, uh, uh, I mean, and I've been saying this for almost two years, the light at the end of the COVID tunnel, <laughs> but um, we'll see if that's where we actually get to. So um, thanks again for coming. Appreciate your time tonight. And we realize it is a, is a weekday. So uh, we'll end our presentation now. And, and by all means, send your questions in if you still have them. We will put this presentation up. It will be on our YouTube channel for you to go and watch. And um, we'll just go from there. So, thank you, everybody. Thanks again. Okay.